Thanks for the kind intro. Good afternoon, APAC. Good morning from the Midlands, UK. I'm Ali Motion. My talk has the somewhat grand title of the seven universal truths to data analytics when using Tableau. But first, a quick introduction. So I'm Ali Motion. I work for a company called Process Evolution here in the UK. And I've been with them for just over three years now um, and have been using Tableau since I joined. So we specialize in working with emergency services clients um, and we talk about helping them with evidence-based decision making. So whether that's a police force looking to optimize the location of their custody suites or the allocation of their neighborhood officers, we would look to try and help them make the best possible decisions. On the fire side of things, we do, so, do a lot of work trying to optimize the, the correct number of stations a fire service should have. Um, and the number and type of appliances in order to meet the current demands for their service. So prior to working with Process Evolution, I spent eight years at British Airways with the operational research team. And th in this role, I worked on a variety of projects, which included flight and cabin crew, commercial projects, and revenue management. So one of the questions I was, I was asked around this was, why have you chosen this as the topic of your, your talk? Um, and why this talk? I think it's a really good question. Um, for me, Tableau has a fantastic community, and certainly for technical aspects or technical questions you might have, there's always a blog or a Zen master out there who's always um, willing to help. However, much of the focus tends to be on the technical aspects, um, and sometimes the softer side of the analytical process tends to get overlooked or left behind. Over the course of the next 20 minutes or so, I'm gonna share some of my experiences from the last decade of working in the analytical field. I'm gonna talk through some of the pitfalls um, that I've seen and talk about um, some of the data visualizations that I've seen in the past. The good, the bad, and the plain ugly. Hopefully, some of the principles or advice that I'm gonna talk through may help in your data visualization process. Just a word on this, uh, I don't claim to be an expert. Um, all I want to do is talk through my experiences over, over the last decade or so in the field. So my first universal truth, universal truth number one, do no harm. This one's broken down into a couple of sections, but I'll refer really to mindset. What are you thinking as you're doing, going through your analytical process? How do you approach the task at hand? Doctors take a Hippocratic Oath, yet as analysts or consultants, we don't. That doesn't mean that these principles don't apply. So the first part to this is avoiding deception, being truthful and ethical in all your dealings. And this actually can be thought of in a number of ways. Avoiding doing things like truncating bar chart accesses, providing inconsistent scaling, or cherry picking time periods to only look at a specific point. Being aware of what you're doing and not trying to fool people through your analysis. Analysis is a construct. One of the most heard and common phrases I hear, particularly from inexperienced or junior analysts is, the data says this. I actually heard it from someone just yesterday who said, oh no, but this is what the data says. Um, it drives me nuts. Uh, I don't like it at all. And I'll tell you why. Yes, your ana analysis is a construct. You've chosen the data sources. You've applied the filters. You've selected the date fields. And you've added specific measures. You've even chosen the chart type. Effectively, you've controlled the methodology from start to finish. The output is your construction. And this is my point about analysis being a construct. It's a construct based on the choices that have been made. And the choices you make influence the outputs. I think possibly the most extreme example of this, or a very good, good way of looking at this, is Makeover Monday. So every, mon every Sunday, Eva or Andy post a data set, and it goes out to everyone. Everyone has the same data available to them. Yet, when it comes to the reviews on Wednesday or in the midweek at some point, we see lots of very different approaches. 
lots of very different data and actually in some cases some very different stories being told all from the same data. So obviously something's gone on there between everyone having the same data at the start and everybody coming up with something slightly different and that's where, where choices, the choices that people make influence the outputs there. And I think as an analyst or a consultant or going through that whole process, being aware of the choices you've made throughout that point, throughout the analytical process and the impact that might have is something to be acutely aware of. Universal point number two, seek not to just answer, but to understand. This one to me starts at primary school. We're conditioned from a very young age to do the sums, move on and complete the exercise. But actually, we need to take a second and remember why we're actually doing this. It's not so, so much as a case of just getting the answer, but actually understanding what that answer tells us and what it means. Rather than going through this and rushing through, taking that step back to look for the deeper meaning or a deeper understanding of the problem, rather than just scr scratching at the surface. It's something I've, I've experienced a lot when working with sort of more junior or inexperienced analysts. Here we've got a fictional airline example. What's happening with business class bookings on Route X? Well, the simple answer would be this week is down 12% versus last year. Okay, but what does that actually mean? So we've not had as many bookings as we had at this point last year. That sounds like it's bad, but we think it's bad. Is it bad? Um, how does this compare to other routes? What's caused by the market? So just looking at the figure of 12%, you could automatically say that's not a great thing. Um, but what happens if all the other routes were down 25%? Actually, down 12 sounds sounds reasonable. Or if last year we overbooked the if we sold the the flight out too cheaply and we made all the bookings too early then actually being down 12 percent might be the right place to be the thing around this is searching for context so understanding what that down 12 percent actually means and putting it into some sort of context the so what so what does it mean and then what are we going to do about it what are the potential potential actions that can be identified so for this, it's very much looking for insight, a depth of thinking, and then forcing people to think about the future questions that may come up, what may be posed when I point, put out the down 12% versus last year. Okay, well, what else would we want to know before we take action on that? Universal truth number three, bar charts are the broccoli of the data viz world. Okay, so I know what you're all thinking, bar charts, broccoli. Other than both starting with B, they've not got a lot in common. Well, I think this is a really good analogy, actually. Broccoli, it's few people's favorite vegetable. It's not particularly exciting, um, but most of us would tend to agree that broccoli is good for us. And I believe the same holds true for the humble bar chart. The bar chart has got a bad rep. It's boring. But actually, if we look at an example of the bar chart here, so this is just superstore data by region for furniture and office supplies. This bar chart, it's simple. It allows the comparison between different attributes. Audiences generally know how to read them. And actually, nine times out of 10, it's quite a good safe choice. If you were to put this in front of most people, I think they quite easily see that West is best. So the humble bar chart, that's one form of data visualization. But actually, a lot of time we need to think about how our visualization or how our style fits in a more broader context. This data viz spectrum um, is a slide, something that I saw Andy Cotbreve present back in Birmingham in 2015. This is when I was first getting into Tableau and data visualization, and I thought it was very powerful at the time. This is around the function and beauty spectrum of data visualization. So on the left hand side you see function with the likes of Stephen Few and this very uh, functional um, company dashboard. On the right hand side we see beauty. So this is the, the sort of art that you may get from the likes of David McCandless and Neil Richards. I think 
for me, there's a place for both. However, and my however is very much like Andy Cockreaves, it depends. In the corporate world, I tend to stay to the left, make things functional and easy to use. However, what we do see is people straying a lot more to the right. It's something that I'm seeing more and more these days in business with people producing things that are a little bit more complex. Sometimes it works out great and other times it leaves the audience scratching their heads. I think the lesson for this is that actually sometimes simple is good enough. Universal truth number four, everyone has a different viewpoint. As an analyst or consultant, sometimes the best thing you can do is put yourself in your client's shoes. Not literally, I'm not asking you to go out there and stretch their stilettos, but actually consider the, the world from their, their viewpoint. Why are they asking these questions? What are the main concerns? In many respects, empathy is the true superpower of a good analyst. Perspective. Perspective is really about how you handle time. This presentation or data visualization that you, you're putting out there may have been the last week or month of your life. Yet, it's maybe only one of 10 meetings that a stakeholder is going to have today. So what can you do to, to sort of combat the fact that their attention span might not be there? Well, being clear about your outputs and takeaways is something that's clearly pivotal. On a side note, uh, when it comes to meetings, never go last. That's unless, of course, it's the Fringe Festival and you get a chance to present, and then obviously going last is great. But no, the tip from that is very much around if you're not first on the agenda and you're, you've been given a slot of 15 minutes, be prepared that that 15 minutes might be condensed down to five or 10. Other people run long, and although that's, that's bad that they have run long, you're then going to be in a position where you have to present your work in a shorter time period. So are you able to condense your key messages down into the salient points and deliver that on maybe one or two slides rather than the 10 or 15 that you thought you were going to have? Universal truth number five is all about the sniff test. Does your analysis pass the sniff test? And I think the, the key question I would be looking to ask myself here is, do you believe what the analysis is telling you? Can you justify what's been seen? And actually, if it's in any way controversial, different from what most people would think, can you justify it? Can you examine the underlying data and say, what's causing this? And I think the one piece that I can't overemphasize in all of this is checking your own work. It's never nice to say, I was wrong. First of all, it kills your credibility. But secondly, it's just a horrible conversation to have. And if you... Even if you've checked your work and you're happy with it, is it possible to get someone else to have a quick once over to make sure you've not made a silly mistake? And by silly mistake, this might be leaving the wrong filter on in Tableau or something very basic that you, you may overlook but actually may change the out, outcome of your analysis. I think in Tableau, there's a few things here. So once you start to get into the realms of table calculations or level of detail calculations, the more complex your approach the more time you should be looking to allocate into the checking to take a couple of examples and just walk through and make sure that the, the calculations that you've put in place are doing what you think they're doing. Universal truth number six, the defaults are not your friend. We've got a nice Berg analogy here, but safe to say this has nothing to do with the Titanic. It just means that more of the mass is, above, is below the water than above, like an iceberg. So iceberg's famous for having a lot more below the water than, than above. When it comes to data visualization, it's actually the same. What, what you actually show to the audience, the actual visualization, is just such a small part of the process. You know, Below the surface, the bits that people don't get to see are the methodology design, the data gathering, calculations, data cleansing, or sense checking that you've done. All that is shown to the world is the visualization itself. And actually, what you choose to show is what the audience will judge you on. What you choose to show is very important 
and actually that's what people are looking at and, and they will make massive assumptions um, and aspersions based on what you've done so thinking about the colors you use the fonts the design even the chart sign types and the annotations that you choose to use they reflect on the quality of your analysis very early on in my career um, i presented some work to to a client um, and i got a little bit of feedback afterwards um, and i was a bit taken aback by the, the feedback actually which said if they didn't make the effort to change the defaults what else couldn't they bother be bothered to do and i think that makes sense so by presenting at that point it was a an excel bar chart in default colors by doing that when it was just bog standard it didn't seem very impressive and then the client looked at me and was like well if you've just gone through a very bog standard or simple approach for the the, the actual visualization what am, what has he done behind the scenes what am i not seeing um, so actually the credibility they are um, very important um, obviously Tableau's defaults are far better than Excel but even looking at this this very um, default or standard superstore data simple things like changing that category slash order or um, changing the, the font sizes and things like that the colorings away from the defaults can really add to your visualization Universal truth number seven. Your analysis is your responsibility. Once a number is presented in a meeting, it's out there. You can't get it back. And actually, this, this comes back to the quote from Mark Twain. A lie can travel halfway around the world before the truth can get his boots on. In fact, the quote that is attributed to Mark Twain, apparently he never said it, but it's something that's out there. And as far as bio.com are convinced, he said it. So what does that mean in the sense of data visualization and analytics? Well, there's plenty of examples of a statistic that's become gospel before it's even been checked. And I think for what, one of the things for me is rather than guessing, um, I think it's important for you just to say, I don't know, but I will check. For me, I'd much rather my analysts are truthful and say yep okay i'm not sure but we can check that and with tableau that's very easy normally very easy to do rather than guessing when you may have you might be 60 30 or 60 40 you might you might think you're you're right but it's always better to have the evidence base behind it the second point on this is knowing the limits of your analysis and i think for me this is really important um and there's a really good example in hans rosling's book factfulness around this it's called the straight line fallacy um, where people assume that growth always continues. So you get that straight line growth piece. And actually, that's not always the case. So if you take, for example, his grandson, who's grown 15% in the last year, well, actually, at three years old, that might make sense. But if you continue that on for years to come, by the time he's a teenager, he's going to be seven foot three. That doesn't make sense. So knowing the limits of the analysis and being explicit about them is quite important and by being explicit about them that might be mean talking about them in a presentation or it might mean actually those assumptions need to go on the visualization somewhere um, in order for people to to truly take them seriously so in summary we have seven universal truths to data visualization firstly looking to do no harm so avoiding deception do no harm the second one very much about a deeper understanding. So seek not just to answer, but to understand. Universal truth number three, bar charts are the broccoli of the data viz world. Much maligned, but we all know they're good for us. Number four, everyone has a different viewpoint of the world. So that different worldview, different perspective. Empathy being that superpower of if you can put yourself in their shoes, possibly get different insights from that. Universal truth number five, does the analysis pass the sniff test? Does it feel right? Am I happy to present it? Have I done all the checks that I need to do? Number six, defaults are not your friends. If you've got the ability to customize and make, you know, put that into a style um, that, that moves away from the defaults um, and portrays you in a better light, then certainly that's what I would suggest. And number seven, your data, your responsibility. So being aware of the responsibility that comes with the numbers, once again, 
very much about doing those checks to make sure what you're putting out there is correct. So as a consultant, we were taught to under promise and over deliver. So what we here have here is a final, final thought about having a little bit more power than you think. So the example here is a tweet that I put out um, after doing the storytelling with data challenge for Co back in July. And when, when I've done that, what I've done is I've taken what was a very bad um, data viz, so 3D stacked pie chart, um, and I've revised it into a, what I've, I see as a, a better approach. So I'd put that on Twitter, forgot about it for a month, came back, um, and these are the stats in, in terms of what's been seen. Now, it's not, it's not like it's gone viral, but actually... I was a bit shocked about just how, how many people had seen it and actually the number of engagements that had occurred. So putting this in context of, of the real world, if it's, if it's in business or your organization, what can happen is that presentations that you deliver, those, once you've delivered that, that presentation, those slides, visualizations, um, they're out in the world. And what can, can happen is that they start to be quoted around the business. Um, for me, this is always a question of if the presentation I've just given was given to a senior manager or it went up to the board, would I still be proud to put my name on it? So a bit of advice for that is write as if it's going to the board. That way you won't be embarrassed. Um, and that works in the corporate world. But I think there's also that piece as well about um, the, the less corporate and maybe the um, things such as your Tableau public profile. So what we know, and we've heard from, from presentations throughout the rest of today, is being that people are watching and actually people are getting jobs based on the, uh, the strength of their Tableau Public Profile. So taking a little bit of um, thought and care about what, what you put on Tableau Public, um, and making sure that, you know, I think a lot of people look at the Tableau Public and say, well, actually, it's a great learning point and being able to demonstrate the learning you've done. Um, and I think that's, that's really critical. But yeah, certainly you probably have more reach uh, than you possibly think you have. So just to summarize, um, before we take questions, uh, that concludes my presentation on universal truths of data analytics. Hopefully there's some principles or some nuggets that may help your thinking. Um, just before, some, before finishing, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank um, the, the team, so Fee, Alex, Emily, and the TFF team. They've put on what is a great conference, um, making it such a success. Thank you very much.